Madam Deputy Speaker, I support the motion. Beyond the current borrowing limits, I also urge the government to expand its financial management tools while keeping tight fiscal discipline to achieve better financial efficiency. The current round of 270 billion and 45 billion limit increases for government securities and treasury bills, respectively, will bring the combined borrowing limit to $1.065 trillion. However, as the Minister has said, these borrowings are actually not spent, but managed and re reinvested. But the Government of Singapore Investment Corporation, GIC, and the Monetary Authority of Singapore, MAS. Our government does not need the funds because it has been running budget surpluses since 1968, except for a few years. The surpluses are attributed to profitable land sales, steady economic growth, high domestic savings through the CPF scheme, and synergy from the Singapore dollar. As a result, we have accumulated $1.35 trillion of financial assets as of March 2020. And with our financial assets way in excess of our liabilities, our countries enjoyed the triple A sovereign credit rating. As the minister has also said, the issuance of government securities is actually for the development of the local bond and money markets and for providing a safe investment instrument for the CPF funds. As of March 2020, about $136 billion of government securities is held by the public of many Singaporeans and local financial institutions and $433 billion held by the CPF board. I note that in budget 2019, the government has announced that it would study the option of using government debt as part of the financing mix for long-term infrastructure projects that the government will be taking on directly. In line with that, I, I ask whether the government will consider to institutionalize a new borrowing limit which may be called the development and con contingency limit to give more flexibility in fiscal management and to take advantage of the historically low interest rates. This DC limit should be separate from the current borrowing limits. Using debt prudently yields many advantages. First, Debt in itself is good for instilling financial discipline. It is a well-researched fact that cash-rich companies perform badly in terms of financial efficiency, and the same arguably applies to the management of a country's finances. Injecting debt into our public projects will improve financial efficiency and, more importantly, transparency and accountability. Secondly, when there's a need to make huge unforeseen spending, like the drawdown to fight the COVID-19, it is better to allow for some bridge financing through the issuance of government securities so as not to disrupt the investment process of GIC. For example, to draw down $52 billion in a short period of time may mean that GIC needs to liquidate some of its investments at unfavorable prices. On the other hand, not tapping GIC may allow it to realize an investment return higher than our borrowing cost, which gives us additional financial benefits. Needless to say, before we deploy more debt, we should ensure that all the cash in the public sector are properly managed in the first place. I noted that the government has already put in place the centralized 
Liquidity Management Scheme in November 2009 to centrally manage the cash of all statutory boards and ministries, and the weighted average yield from the scheme for the year ended 31st March 2020 was 1.93% per annum. So my next question is whether the government will go one step further and soak up the excess cash of the state boards and deploy the cash to longer term investments to yield a higher return. Excess cash is defined as cash over and above what is required to run the operations of the state boards. As of March 2020, my estimate of the excess cash held by the state boards totaled about $50 billion. This is not currently included in our national reserves. I would also like to ask whether the government will be tightening up the budgeting process a little more. The government currently employs a block budgeting process where the whole budget is allocated to the ministries in blocks, with the quantum increasing every year in line with GDP growth. Each ministry then uses its discretion to reallocate the block to its individual projects and users. A zero-based budgeting process should be adopted instead, whereby each project is re-evaluated every year by the Ministry of Finance. Projects which have outlived their usefulness should be closed or scaled down promptly. Ongoing projects after reaching maturity should reduce their spending gradually every year to reinforce the importance of achieving efficiency gains. These practices are common in the private sector and can also be adopted in the public sector. Lastly, I would like to ask whether the government will look at increasing taxes to further boost our financial standing. However, for the global capital markets, we should not give the impression that the GST is the only source. In the past, the government has taken many conscious decisions to do away with many taxes, especially those related to the progressive tax regime. For example, when GST was introduced in 1994, the government started to reduce personal income tax and corporate income tax from 30% to 20% by 2007. The government abolished estate duty in 2008, and at the same time, took out tax on interest income in addition to the absence of capital gains tax and other forms of wealth taxes. There are also no additional taxes on foreigners, although they do not need to contribute to CPF or pay premiums to the MediShield and CareShield schemes. In conclusion, I urge the government to make use of the COVID recovery year of 2021 as a starting point to review our fiscal policies, strategies, and processes to achieve greater financial efficiency for building a stronger financial foundation for the future. If the government believes that we are in a new normal, then all policies an extension of them will no longer be the answer of the future. I have thus made several recommendations or questions or asked various questions on how to make use of debt prudently, tighten up budget allocation to increase financial discipline, and reintroduce multiple tax collection avenues to boost our financial standing, which I hope the government will reconsider in totality. Madam Deputy Speaker, I support the motion. Thank you.